When I say colostrum is important for lambs and calves, I mean it is fundamentally, critically make or break important. We've understood this for decades and yet study after study shows us that we could be doing this so much better. I've talked about where we are with beef cattle in the UK, but it's a very similar picture across the rest of the world and across dairy cattle and sheep. One of the fundamentals that we have to understand first is simply the volume. How much colostrum does a calf or a lamb need? This seems so basic and yet you can often hear differing advice and sometimes even just tumbleweed. Let's start with calves, we'll pick up lambs afterwards and for simplicity's sake, I'm talking about good quality colostrum. I'm not talking about any supplements, any replacements, anything you can buy off a shelf. It's from the same species and it's from a healthy, well-fed cow. And secondly, this refers to total intake. We're not going to count anything that calf or lamb might have already had from their mother. The current rule of thumb for calves is that the liters of the colostrum they require is 10% of their body weight in kilos. So a 30 kilo calf should need three liters of colostrum. Critically, that should be in the first four to six hours of life, ideally in the first two. What seems sensible about this rule is that it takes into account the size of the calf. If we're talking about a 60, 70 kilo beef calf compared to say a 25 kilo Jersey calf, it seems very sensible to assume that because of one's bigger size, it would have bigger energy and antibody requirements and it should require a bigger volume of colostrum. But as I've heard plenty of people point out, this can sometimes seem like an awfully big volume. I'm about the same weight as the biggest calf I've ever carved, that's about 85 kilos. That's like me drinking eight and a half liters in one sitting. I don't think I'd feel very well after that, so it's plausible that bottle feeding or more likely stomach tubing this 10% volume could end up making the calf feel pretty uncomfortable and have some other drawbacks. So for example, calves and lambs at this early stage aren't functioning ruminants. They really only use one of the four compartments of their stomach that they'll eventually go on to use. This is the abomasum. It's the compartment of the stomach most similar to say a human stomach or a dog stomach or a pig stomach. The other compartments of the stomach which are at this stage are small and immature. That's the rumen, the amazum and the reticulum. Those are more important for plant fermentation and so they become more important later on. In fact, the last thing we want to do is push milk into the rumen where it ends up fermenting because this can lead to a number of serious issues. And so this begs the question, how big is a calf's abomasum? These are some numbers from the SRUC in Scotland average calf abomasal volume they found was 2.74 litres, maximal volume of 3.4 litres. And so it quickly becomes apparent that some of the volumes we could be tubing into calves are pushing the upper boundary of what it might be safe and comfortable to give those calves. In truth, at the moment, although our intuition might tell us one thing, we can't be 100% certain on the possible drawbacks of feeding these large volumes in one go. It's possible that there's no negative effect at all, or it's possible that even if there is a negative effect, that it's outweighed by the benefit of having a clear, straightforward protocol that's easy for all farm staff to follow, making it easier for all calves on that farm to get a good amount of colostrum. A sensible compromise could be to split that first feed so long as the second feed isn't too late. So you could have one feed soon after birth, say within two hours, and another feed, say at four to six hours. Whatever the protocol, it has to be consistent and it has to be practical for the person or people doing it. As for choosing the volume itself, knowing simply that a big calf requires more colostrum than a small calf is a very useful thing to understand and therefore having some means of measuring or even just estimating calf birth weight and adjusting the volume of colostrum fed accordingly would be helpful as would knowing if that calf has already had a feed from its mother or not. Team Sheep I've not forgotten about you I hope you're still with us because for lambs again the volume is typically quoted as a per kilo volume so 50 mils per kilo of lamb in the first feed, so that's within the first few hours, which is repeated at six hourly intervals. So by the time that lamb is 24 hours old, it will have had 200 mils of colostrum per kilo of body weight. Now, what I think is interesting here is that 50 mils per kilo is essentially 5% of that lamb's body weight. Compare that to the 10% which we'd use as a rule of thumb for calves. So the sheep advice isn't saying that lambs need to get any less colostrum, it's just that that first feed is more moderate and then there's a focus on more regular, moderate volumes after that. So by the end of the day, that lamb has had a very respectable 
volume of colostrum 20% of its body weight. So rather than a potential focus in cattle on this single big feed, here we're talking about repeated moderate volumes. One practical reason for this springs to mind, and that's safety. So for calves, especially if they are on their mothers, you often get one bite at the cherry. A freshly carved cow has the capacity to do you a hell of a lot more harm than a freshly lambed ewe. And at the end of the day, no animal is worth getting killed for, and therefore in some situations it might be better on balance to give calves that one big feed. It could however be a really useful change, say where dairy calves are being lifted quickly from their mothers. So that is one of the big three cues of colostrum, the quantity cue. Did I make it complicated enough? Of course there is a long list of other factors which affect the animal's requirements and also its ability to absorb that colostrum. So that includes the timing of feeding, the method of feeding, the cleanliness of that colostrum, the weather, the list goes on and on. I think you've had enough from me today, but I will cover all of these in a future technical. So if you don't want to miss those, click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it. If you're feeling very generous, leave me a comment and give the video a thumbs up. Over and out.